So, remember when I did a video on which figure is better to get? Well, pay no attention to them as we have new and better figures. Welcome to round two. What's going on everybody, Republic Cinema here, and in this video we're going to be doing something a little different. So, rather than just doing a review of the Bayway 1030 knockoff of Optimus, I figured we'd do another versus comparison. Which figure is better? Which figure is a better buck for your bang? Or bang for your buck? I don't know. At the time of the previous video's recording, it was just a clash between two figures, which one had better quality and which one was cheaper to get. But as time went on, other knockoff companies finally scrammed their forces and came up with new figures. And my oh my, are they better than the other two? But which one's one that you just want to get? One that's fun? and quality like. Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at which one's better to get. But first, let's talk about the figure that started it all. That being the original Studio Series 102 Rise of the Beasts Optimus Prime. He ended up being a Target exclusive, which ended up him being rare, and then the demand got so high that Target had to cancel the orders, thus making him very hard to find. But he is getting a re-release in the main line next year, thankfully. Anyways, another company named Black Mumbo went around and made their knockoff version of it, which is basically the same thing except a few bits of paint scratched off. Whilst this guy was pretty cheap, the quality on this figure consisted of not just tight joints, but exceedingly stiff joints, making him not as fun as moving around and playing around with him as the original Studio Series 102 Optimus. So that's when MHZ came around and made a better version. The only difference was is that it was uh, disproportionate in size. But again, that's where Baywey comes in. So when the MHZ knockoff came around, I was quite surprised, as I thought he was a Baywey knockoff. Turns out I was wrong and he was his own thing. And he was oversized, and came loaded with accessories. But anyways, after the release of the MHZ, followed the release of the Baywey knockoff, which is basically the MHZ, but smaller. Mind you, these figures are roughly around the same price on AliExpress. But before we talk more about the figures, let's take a quick look at which packaging looks better. So the MHZ box art comes with a taken CG rendition of Optimus Prime, but to avoid copyright, the panel over here and the smokestack over here were switched. As originally, the smokestack was meant to be on the front, whereas the panel would be right behind it. But hey, it's understandable that they would do that to avoid copyright. Cool box art. For a change, however, the bottom of the box was not boring, surprisingly. As most boxes we see nowadays are just filled with words fun I guess. And this time the back of the box had nothing but features of what you get inside the packaging, as well as the sides also had something like that too. Now Bayway finally came around and their box art looks pretty nice too. Of course it's a box art that appears to resemble the 3-0 product, but of course did a similar thing that MHZ did on the side of the shoulders to avoid copyright. But what's weird about this box art is that you switch it to the side and it's basically the same thing as the other side. Oh, and the two sides and the bottom are all boring. So box art wise, despite Bayway having a better cover for the box, I think the box art would definitely have to go to MHC as it has a little bit more box art thrown around the box. Now moving on to the figures. So starting off, painting and sculpting is pretty much the same. I mean, there are a few paint differences here and there, as well as the chest being a different paint, one being more accurate than the other. Now, not to say that Bayway version is bad. I think it's cool that they slapped the matrix chamber right in front of the chest, but the reason the chest on the MHZ is more accurate was because Optimus Prime's chest, even this midsection over here, was entirely red. It's okay, at least Bayway added more paint onto the top of the shoulder, unlike MHZ. Now, both of the legs are pretty much painted the same, but the shade of silver that they used for Bayway is a little bit darker than the shade of silver that was used on the MHZ knockoff. Now, both the gray paint on the back is pretty much the same on the two, for movie accuracy. One thing that I noticed, however, is that unlike the Bayway version, there is actually like this one bit of red on the MHZ version, so it looks as if MHZ decided to go over the top accuracy over here. Still, good job on Bayway's behalf. The other thing that MHZ has that Bayway does not is dually wheels, as the two Pairs of two wheels on each side was something that Optimus Prime did have in the Rise of the Beasts movie. So, paint scheme, I'm not really sure where to 
put paint scheme in. Both of them have paint thrown around each other where the other one does not have paint. But what I can confirm is that diecast definitely goes to the MHZ. As unlike the Bayway version which just has diecast metal on the side flaps right here, nice one, very boring, uh, the MHZ version has all sorts of diecast activity on the thighs, further acknowledging that MHZ Optimus Prime's thighs are made of steel. Well, it's actually alloy, but whatever. Now, quality-wise, both of them are pretty much the same. Both got fairly loose and fairly tight joints spread around the figures. Bayway also tends to have a nice consistency on that too. However, one thing I noticed with my copy is that when I try to move this backwards real fast, this thing starts moving downwards, which is primarily used for transformation. It's not supposed to do that. This is a problem that I had on the OP01, by the way. However, with the arms moving around on the MHZ, it works flawlessly, as none of these parts move up and down. That's because they're very tight. However, one thing I noticed that they changed with the Bayway knockoff is that you can have Optimus Prime look down a little bit more, as they did raise this little thing that holds the head in place. This is something they somewhat have on the MHZ, but it works better on the Bayway. So I'm gonna have to give quality to the Bayway version. The legs aren't as tight as the MHZ. Oh, and what do you know? Unlike MHZ, you could actually fold in the smokestacks backwards to make things more movie accurate. This is a feature that the MHZ version does unfortunately not have. But anyways, I think it's time we move on to accessories. So first, let's start off with Bayway's accessories. Now, one thing I will mention is that when I finally, finally got this guy in mail, after what seemed to be an eternity, he came in incomplete, as he was missing a side panel right here, the ion cannon, and the axe. Starting off, he comes with some nice swords, which look really nice, actually. I like how the tips of the blades are painted orange. It really appears as if it's a perfect mixture of the Transformers Prime blades and the Michael Bay blades. Also, Bayway decided to settle it and just throw in two tabs on each side. One tab, however, being bigger than the other. Anyways, the sword would plug in on the side right here, and the same thing would have been for the other side had it not been for that missing tab right there. So for now, Optimus Prime is unfortunate gonna have to run around with one sword on his wrist and the other sword on his grip. I think he was more used to having both swords on his wrist. And then finally, we get the accurate ion cannons that Optimus Prime used in the movie, which appears to have not only a slot, but a tab to tab onto that slot right there. Kinda cool that they did something like that. They wanted to make it secure and I appreciate that. So anyways, here's Optimus Prime dual wielded with both of his arm cannons. Unfortunately, this figure does not come with any blast effects to plug in onto the tips of the guns. I mean, it's not like they could fit the blast effects on the tips of the guns, no thanks to this thing right here. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the axe, but I hear the axe does have a tab slapped onto the side to make things easier for weapon storage. Whereas the MHZ knockoff, not so much. It's a little bit more complex than that, but we'll get to that in a second. There's also this thing, which is a hologram of Earth, which tabs in nicely. Unfortunately, this figure does not come with a hologram of the transwarp key, unlike the MHC version, let alone an actual transwarp key. And then there's also these two pieces, but this thing is used for transformation, which we'll get to later on in the review. However, this thing right here simply plugs in onto the back like so. Make sure that this thing is like this and this thing is on the bottom, otherwise you're gonna have problems. If you tab in the Bayway knockoff of the 44 Jetwing Optimus' jetpack onto that little back piece. Kinda cool. I mean, sure, the jetpack doesn't stay there too well, but hey, it's one step ahead of the MHZ version, because my oh my does Bayway consist of accessories. This guy would have also come with an ion cannon that would have had one section painted gray, but that was unfortunately one of the accessories I was missing upon receiving my copy. I believe the gun tabbed onto the hand a little bit better than the MHZ, because for some reason the MHZ has a little bit of problems with holding the gun. But anyways, let's talk about this Noah figure that he comes with, which does in fact come with a buttload of replaceable limbs. Most of them being arms, of course, and one head. Though articulation on this figure is a little limiting, but it is a minifigure, so yeah. It was pretty impressive that they had the chance to put as much articulation as they could. Oh, and did I tell you that this thing came in with assembly required? It came in... <sighs> oh, I had to sneeze there. But anyways, it came with two of these. Moving on to the three pairs of arms options, this guy comes with a pair of normal arms, knife arms, and of course, the arm cannons. 
At this point, it's safe to say that this minifigure is armed. More than that, actually. So the difference between the extra head over here and the other head is that this head is designed for him to look upwards, whereas in the other one, not so much. Which is, of course, used to reference the, uh... I'm not gonna mention it, but bum bum. Now moving on to the accessories that the MHC has, he does come packing with accessories, which we kind of mentioned that in a previous review. But it's okay, we're doing it again. Let's try to speed run. He comes with these two swords, which of course plug in onto that side over there. Finally an axe, which for a change comes with this silly little accessory that you have to plug in onto the axe in order to have them stored on the back. The original baby pew pew gun, a pair of the actual arm cannons, which don't wanna stay. Stab in! Oh, can't mention this nice, cool-looking gun, which barely stays on there. Look at that, look at that. Come on, really? This is the kind of way you hold your gun to surrender. It's supposed to be like this. To add further insult to injury, there's no way to plug it on to the back. You have to have an extra piece to plug it onto the back. Yay fun! Oh boy, if only I could tell if the Ion Cannon that the Bayway version came with was a little better than this one. But unfortunately, I cannot because I don't have it. Pain. Much like the Bayway version, the MHZ also does in fact come with a hologram. But, oh, what's this? There's another one? And in fact, it is a hologram of the transwarp key. Nice. There's in fact the transwarp key that this guy comes with. I do have it. I just don't know where it is. But it's basically this thing, just silver, so it's flat and inaccurate. But Bayway didn't even try. Another thing MHZ also has is a back trailer piece as well, but appears to be more accurate. Again, we'll be talking about that later in the video. Anyways, here's the MHZ Noah, which is much better than the Bayway version. Not to say the Bayway version's all that bad, it's just this one's just better quality-wise and articulation-wise. Here is a little comparison between the two, and this guy has a little bit more paint. It looks as if this thing just has molded plastic all over it. Doesn't even look like they did a good job painting the chest as well. And rather than replacing the arms multiple times, it's just simple to just tab in accessories on the side of the arms. So you get Noah's arm cannons, blast effects for Noah's arm cannons, better looking swords, and even a different pair of blast effects primarily used for the jetpack. Another thing to point out is I didn't mention this while reviewing the MHZ version, but you can actually remove the backpack. Kinda cool. So for accessories, uh, I don't know. On one hand you get quantity, but on the other you get quality. Unless we're talking about Noah, then Noah goes to this guy. But honestly, I don't think the Noah from the Bayway version is that much of a deal. So if I have to say which figure has better accessories, I'm probably gonna go with the Bayway version. As the accessories have a little bit more paint than the MHZ version. And the Bayway swords are much better too. Now, normally in a review, I'd talk about the articulation and the size comparison, but nah, we're not doing that. Articulation is pretty much the same thing, and as I am talking, there is pretty much a size comparison between these two. If you want, here's all four of the versions of the 102 Optimus Prime. The knockoff, MHZ, Bayway, and OP01. So, uh, yeah, not gonna lie. Four 102 Optimus Primes, that's, uh, that's something, huh? Yep. It's not enough. Now, one thing I will point out in the transformation of the MHZ knockoff is that you have to move a whole bunch of, like, well, at least two hinge joints to fold this in and then close it in onto that piece right there, as well as this side thing being double hinge jointed, which is very unnecessary, as well as this tab right here. The Bayway version calls for a little bit of simplicity. Like, look at that. All you have to do is just move that around. No double joints, none of that. And another thing to point out is that the tab is completely closed in, which is something that neither the other knockoffs nor the original Studio Series 102 Optimus Prime have for some reason. Oh, and then the tab is just located on the foot, so that just plugs in like so, revealing a tab right here. Oh, and then these two have to tab in together. Oh, and hey, will you look at that. All you have to do is just move this down, as well as move the smokestacks backwards. Now, one thing I will admit that is a little bit better on the back of the MA HC is that this tab right here, when you plug it in, it looks more accurate. Whereas tabbing the back piece on the Bayway version, whilst it works, it's just, it's not as accurate as the MHZ, to be honest. But hey, tabs in nice and snug. Now, moving on to alt mode comparison, they are like literally the same thing. Well, I mean, if you look at the front. But there are, of course, some drastic changes to the back, whereas this one looks more accurate, but this one on the other hand, not so much. But hey, both of them clear up kibble nicely well. So anyhow, I think the accuracy for the truck mode will have to go for the MHZ version, as this back piece works really well. Except when trying to tab 
Abba trailer hitch. However, tapping the trailer onto the Bayway version works flawlessly. I am using the original trailer, but it's also doable in the Bayway knockoff as well. Now, weapon storage wise, storing most of the weapons in the MHZ is a little bit complicating, but on the Bayway version is a little bit more simplistic. To be honest, on the Bayway version, however, it does look more messy, but it's not like the accessories are gonna go anywhere as they are tabbed in nice and snug. And same thing with the MHZ version. But to be honest, I'd probably give weapon storage to the Bayway version as it is pretty simplistic just to tab in everything. Unlike this, you have to do a few steps to tab everything in. And what's the fun in that? Now, unfortunately, there is pretty much no place to store Noah in, as you just basically have to have him standing. There's like no tab to plug in the foot to keep him in place. So yeah, that's kind of a bummer. But anyways, I think that's pretty much all I have to say for the alt modes. If there is in fact anything that I forgot to mention in this video, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I know, I'm missing the gun and the axe, to which I understand they probably could just tab in somewhere over here. And I think overall, I might go with Bayway being the better pick. Now, I know MHZ has more stuff, plus a little bit better paint apps somewhat here and there, but Bayway's accessories on the other hand don't require a couple of steps in order to plug them onto the back for weapon storage, especially on the truck mode. The MHZ, however, comes loaded with extra steps that you have to do. And some of the paint apps on the Bayway's accessories are a little better, especially the darker shade of silver. I like that more. It's more accurate. In addition, you could actually plug in the jetpack onto this guy using an extra piece, such as this thing, which unfortunately the MHZ version does not have. And also, unlike the MHZ version, you could actually plug in the trailer onto the Bayway version. So uh, yeah, the overall best out of the two would probably go to the Bayway version. And maybe in the future, Bayway might have other repaints like an Ultra Magnus repaint, Nemesis Prime repaint, and a Shattered Glass Optimus Prime repaint in the future. I mean, they might not do that, but I really hope they do. The MHZ is already going their way to make a Nemesis Prime repaint, so uh, yeah. I suppose it's only a matter of time until they do a Shattered Glass version, let alone an Ultra Magnus version. That's if they do something like that. But anyways, I sure hope Bayway goes their way to do those three repaints, because that would be amazing. I would get every single one of them. But all I have to say over that is time will tell. So bottom line, quality goes to the Bayway, and the quantity goes to the MHZ, especially when it comes to accessories. But anyways, if you're looking to get either figures, you can find them on AliExpress for roughly around the same price, whether it be at $30 or $25. Now mind you, when getting these things from AliExpress, sometimes the boxes will get busted, or on like my unlucky self, I did end up missing a few bits and pieces for this guy. Three pieces to be exact. I mean, I'm sure you can get these on Show-Z store, but Show-Z store does tend to sell out real quick. So that's why me personally, I like to do AliExpress. And I believe ordering off either website still takes about the same time, like roughly three weeks to a month to arrive to your place. So yeah, it's up to you whether you want to use AliExpress or Show-Z store. I personally recommend AliExpress. Amazon does in fact have these, but they're more expensive. They're like $40 a pop. I personally wouldn't have recommended that. But anyways, if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button, share this with your friends as well, turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another video. Let me know how I did in this video as well. And most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See ya.